Hey everybody, today we're gonna to look at perhaps one of the most important workflow tools in all of Logic. Now obviously we're gonna have a variety of opinions on this, but I find myself using this more than a lot of the other organizational tools that we have. This is something that allows us to work between projects. It really makes it so we don't have to have templates that we create and update all the time. This particular feature is an import feature which allows us to import from other projects. And so we don't have to copy and paste or have both of them open or do anything. This is really useful. So let me show you how to get there. We're gonna to come to our media area under all files. So we have project, this is the project we're looking at. This is media on our computer. Then we have all files. Then we just have to navigate to where we keep our logic projects and then we can come through here. And I wanted to do an update on this because of the new version 10.5, but also just as a reminder for everybody, I know that a lot more people are watching the videos now and uh, I'm, I always forget which things we've talked about recently and which ones we haven't and which things perhaps new users need to know. And for me, this is just one of those super important uh, tools and techniques. So for instance, just to show you how this works, I'm gonna to navigate to the new project, uh, the new demo project, Ocean Eyes from Billie Eilish. Double click on it, and it'll open up the project here inside of the project. So here's all of the, the different tracks inside there. And say I wanted just to use the base, for instance. So I could do the content, which means all of the MIDI data that was programmed there, or I could leave that off and just do the plugin and then you can see I have I.O. and automation as well. So I could pull some or all of the data. When I click on the plugins, it brings in Alchemy, Channel EQ, Tube EQ, and Compressor. So let's add that to our project. Here it is. And this is the one directly from the demo project with the instrument all loaded up and tweaked. We have a channel EQ with an interesting curve. Tube EQ on top of that. Not doing a ton, but definitely a little bit. Then we have a compressor, which Pulling down right that attack to help offset some of that. Okay, so cool. That allows us really easy access to any of the typical sounds that we use. And I can go right back. So if I have another bass sound in a project, I think, oh, you know what? That, that bass sound from that project would be perfect. I wonder how we did it. Let's just add that in from this other project. even came with a volume automation. But if I wanna do more than that, say I, there's a whole drum track on a project I worked on and I wanna bring that across, then I would actually probably do the content and the plugins. And I don't think I had any automation on there. Uh, we did have Ascend, so let's just see what happens. So here's this. Now this is interesting. You'll notice they come across as MIDI data and not as the original drummer tracks. And it looks like the send was turned down, although in the original project, I don't believe it is. Not sure if that's a bug in the new version or if there's something else I needed to click on here. Let's go back in here for one second. Plugins. I probably, I don't know if I needed to click automation or not for that to get that across. Let's do it one more time. This time we'll just choose everything 
add that. Let's just click OK. And still no levels on that send, even though the original there, there was some there. So that looks like a bug in a way, but easy to just adjust that. We'd want to adjust it anyway. Okay, so then that brings me to the other thing I wanted to look at, which is the new live loops and how those get imported here. So we have a project here that has those. So all of these were live loops. Let's do content. Well, it's not content. I'll, I'll go back and look at it for a second. We have a content column, but it's not active. In this case, now they've added cells. So we could add the cells in. So this is new for 10.5. Let's add this. It says by selecting add, you can create a new aux or you can choose an existing aux from your project. So this is smart. It lets us decide if we just want to create a whole new set of aux channels with reverbs or we can just use the one that's existing. Let's just use the existing one. And now we're going to close that and look at our cells. So I can just bring in things from all of my projects, whether they're uh, from live loops in the cells or they're from tracks and regions it doesn't matter they've updated the whole system and so now we can easily just pull things from all the different sources that we want and begin to build either a brand new project with all those different elements or this would be a way if you wanted to start creating a template that you wanted to use so for instance i could say I wanted this drum kit and this bass and these keys, all of these things, they all can be pulled from different places without their content and cell information. And once you're done with it and you have it in this one location, then we can save as a template and we can open that up every single time that we want to. So you can see we have a folder here located inside of our music folder which is where the templates get stored. So super easy. Now the last thing I want to look at with all of this uh, includes the one other area of things we can import. So for instance, going back into this project, there were some things at the top which aren't with the tracks. We have the marker track, the signature track, the tempo track, and there's no project note, so nothing to select here. And then we do have a master track at the bottom and then our aux tracks. But we also have this button at the bottom that says import project settings. So we can import screen sets. So if you create some screen sets in one of your projects that you want to share, you can import them here. Score sets, score settings, sync settings, tuning settings. Uh, that's with like our her mode tuning. We have our movie settings, transform sets, our staff styles, metronome, audio settings, asset settings, lane settings, our sets, text styles, record settings, MIDI settings, all of these things. So if, and this has happened a couple times, I had a project where something got tweaked and I can't find the setting, but I have a project that I know is working just fine. I'll come in and import some of these settings to see if it fixes it. Maybe I actually messed up uh, one of my audio settings and, and couldn't remember what, what or where I'd messed with it. Uh, another thing you can do that's super handy with this is to just make sure that if you're going on to a new computer, um, say you're moving from your studio into another studio to work, I bring a little flash drive with some of my settings or just a project really that I've, I've worked with and I'll come in and as needed, I'll bring in screen sets that way or I'll bring in um, different audio settings, etc. So you can do all of this and save these as essentially presets 
for many of the things you might be working with. So you can work in a more familiar place uh, than having to start over and create everything from scratch in somebody else's studio. Okay, hope this helps. I hope that it's useful. I think that for me, learning how to bring stuff from session to session was one of the, the biggest light bulbs in terms of project management because it meant I could just easily work and continue working without necessarily having to store all this information in so many different places and keep track of it. Now I can just pull in instruments from songs that I know will work in other songs. And I don't have to necessarily say presets if I don't want to. I just have to make sure I know where all my projects are and uh, make sure that they're backed up. Okay, that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed this. This week, we're going to be doing five days of videos, one a day every day. So come back, make sure that uh, you have that notification bell ring so that you'll get notified when we post these up. Hope you're having a great week so far. I know it's just Monday. Hope you're being safe. Uh, I know it's kind of a crazy time we're living in with all of the protests and on top of that, the pandemic. Uh, so make sure that you're standing up for yourself and what you believe in. But um, I'm hoping that you'll come out the other end safe. Talk to you tomorrow.